Hey YouTubers, how's it going? Thanks for joining me. I got this really, really, really good article that was just published the other day. I actually want to share it with you guys. And it has to do with, um, in correlation to the other article I was reading to you guys about people's debt service ratio out of control. Well, this article is really good because it actually dives into files. And they share several stories of several files they came across of specific people. I don't think they mentioned their names, but the specific people and their lifestyle and what's happening with them. So I'm going to share this with you guys. I'll leave a link below if you guys want to read the entire article because it's really long. Drowning in debt is the new normal in Canada. An expert in consumer insolvency describes what it's like on the front lines of Canada's worsening household debt crisis. So it's from a few days ago. I actually, this is a really well-written article. On any, on any given day, now you can expect to hear at least one economist, public official, or financial commentator express grave concern about the mountain of debt Canadians now carry. The bloated debt load of Canada, um, Canadian households has become a pervasive topic in the media. But for all the attention the subject has received, it's safe bets that most people still cling to very cliched notions that only so-called deadbeats ever hit the debt wall. Nothing could be further from the truth. The reality is Canadians would be shocked if they could peer into the private financial lives of many of their closest neighbors and friends. As a licensed insolvency, insolvency trustee firm, our practices is on the front lines of Canada's household debt binge and the bad per, uh, uh, personal finance habits that ensure so many people and, hold on, it's zooming out here, and what, uh, and what we see every day is that the majority of the of those grappling with serious debt trouble are most typical individuals and families you you could imagine now so basically they go into some of these um stories and i'm gonna leave the link below but this is the one that caught my eye this is a really interesting story i'm gonna get to it okay here this one this one right here let me share a scenario of someone who is self-employed as it highlights how a debt problem can spiral out of control qu uh, quickly. I met uh, recently with a woman in her 50s who owns her own company that furnishes and decorates high-end businesses like big law firms or at least it did. With big firms shrinking to meeting reduced market demands and trimming costs, her business has dried up. Her accountant brought her to me, and it was clear she had severely mismanaged her business and financial affairs, despite the accountant's warnings. We see this in all uh, we see this all the time. Small businesses owners typically very good at what they do, but very poor at handling day-to-day -day administration. Here are some specifics that show how uh, mis misaligned how misaligned her lifestyle and business expenses were with the actual cash she was earning. So she owes, she owns a townhouse mortgage at 600 large and it's estimated at 650 large. Her mortgage payment is 3,600 a month. Our CRA line against the house for personal income tax owing is 98 large. <sighs> She's right here on their water. She had previously refinanced her house to help fund her business. She had a prior bankruptcy 15 years ago discharge. Leased car, 51 large, owing. Credit card debt, 75 large. That's unsecured debt, I hope. Yeah, it's unsecured, it's credit card. 75 large. Business loan, personally guaranteed with high interest rate, 45 large. Outstanding debts to suppliers, 80 large. Business rent owing, seven months behind, 11 large. Well, that's very cheap rent in comparison to what I pay. Net self-employment income, 3,500 per month or 42 large per year. The CRA line is a big problem here. She can't sell or refinance her house 
with the existing line unless she pays back her taxes. While, the ma- while in the meantime, interest charges and penalties pile up. Although this may seem hopeless, it is actually straightforward. Personal bankruptcy scenario. She closes the business. Any source deduction or HST owing is included in the personal bankruptcy filing. As are any personally guaranteed businesses business debt. She walks away from her house and cannot be sued for any shortfall due to the creditor protection offered by her bankruptcy. She will lose her house and business, but that almost certainly would have happened regardless. I should have uh, point out that client is the type of situation often insist on keeping their house, a reflection of a deep-seated Canadian devotion to home ownership, and it takes long and difficult conversation with the family, friends, and trusted advisors before they come around and realization that they have to let go of their home. Keep in mind that the above situation is very normal for us. This is something we see every week. Holy crap, really? As it started, uh, uh, as started earlier, uh, stated earlier, sorry guys, the sun is on my screen here. Look at this sun. It's just blasting in here. I could barely see my screen. It just decided to come in the last few seconds here. As stated earlier, with the most troubling trend, we see now that the uh, now is a flood of regular Canadians facing financial crisis. Households and individuals who are employed have decent incomes, own business, and have done everything they feel and they should be doing now to find themselves facing ser- uh, facing facing serious, if not insurmountable, debt problems. They are now having to file insolvencies now or will in the next few years. This is this is crazy. It's a really long article, guys. I'm just going to leave a link below and let you guys take a look at it and poke at it. Comment below and let me know. I, I know I've talked about this. I know it's very straightforward. Hey, you know what? You do your crime. You do your time. You pay your debt. You you know, you take the loan. You pay the pay it back. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, everyone's in that. Everyone's in that. Sorry, let me get out of the sun here. Everyone's in that false pretense, hey, I could pay that back, you know, but when you're 50 and you're taking out loans that you have to pay back in 30, 40 years, or you have a mortgage that's going to take you 40, 50 years to pay off, aren't people looking at that? Uh, I don't know. This must be very detrimental and depressing to some people, the situations they've put themselves in. I think they're beyond. I think a lot of people, I think Canada needs to set up some sort of debt, debt helpline. To help people um, coordinate with uh, with professionals to discuss what's happening and and what they could do about their problem. Anyways, let me know what you guys think. I'll leave a link below to the article. Thanks for watching.